Hello. Now we'll discuss about the bidirectional champing gate using transistors with a provision to cancel the pedestal. Look at the transistors Q1 and Q2 whose collectors are going to be tied together where the output is taken. Okay. And for the basis of both the transistors we are applying control signal but control signal is going to be of opposite nature. So you can say that one this is V1 and V2 and this is V1 and V2 ok and source signal is going to be applied to base of Q1 only control signals now we require two and both are exactly opposite of each other and these are the corresponding waveforms now how can we remove the pedestal that we will see ok so first case case 1 when voltage control voltage of Q1 is going to be at V1 by that time voltage control voltage of Q2 will be at V2 and V2 is negative and V1 is positive so that makes that makes Q1 comes into on condition so that is active region and Q2 comes into off condition so it is simply looks like it is disconnecting this part as it is disconnected output is only depends on source signal Vs because this Vc is going to make in the transistor into active region so V0 is proportional to Vs with 180 degrees phase shift and V0 is going to be equal to Vcc minus IC1 into RC there is a current flows in active region that is called as let us assume it is IC1 so that is the current flows from VCC through this RC towards collector of Q1 transistor IC1 so this is the voltage with Vs is equal to 0 when Vs is equal to 0 during transmission path ok during transmission period this is transmission period because output is proportional to input during transmission period output is VCC minus IC1 into RC when no signal is applied if signal is applied that signal superimposes on this voltage in active region ok so that is what you can check this one this is case 1 whenever VC is it whenever VC of for example VC of Q2 make it whenever VC of Q2 is at V2 that means VC of Q1 is at V1 then the transmission is going to be takes place and whenever no signal is applied this is a dotted line and where uh, if the signal is applied that superimposes on this one with 180 degrees phase shift ok now second case when VC1 of Q1 is going to be at V2 and VC of Q2 is at V1 then now this is positive and it is negative voltage that makes Q1 into off condition and Q2 comes into on condition whenever it comes into on condition it comes into active region so if it is in active region V0 is equal to there is a current flows now and that is I2 and there is no current flows in collector of Q1 because it is in the off condition it is in the on condition now the output voltage is VCC minus IC2 into RC so if you are going for the exact similar, similar transistors and symmetrical arrangement that gives ok if IC1 is equal to IC2 then you are going to get output during non transmission stage non transmission stage non transmission period is equal to output during transmission period with Vs is equal to 0 so that means no pedestal no pedestal because this is output voltage you will get it as Vcc minus Vcc minus IC2 RC where the dotted line is going to be giving Vcc minus IC1 into RC if IC2 IC1 are same then you are going to get the same output voltage that means no pedestal 
and your output signal is going to be exactly proportional to input signal with 180 degrees phase shift during the transmission period. This is non-transmission period. Why this is non-transmission period? Because output is constant. It is not related to input signal. Because whenever Q2 is in the on condition, Vs is not applied to Q2. So that output is independent of Vs. Okay. So output is a constant and the value is always Vcc minus Ic2 into Rc. That means there is no pedestal as there is no difference between the outputs during transmission as well as transmission with input signal 0. So now we discuss about the disadvantage of this circuit. First disadvantage, we have seen that one at any instant of time. That means during non-transmission period as well as transmission period. Always at any instant of time one of the transistor is in the active region so that a current flows from VCC towards the transistor. That means always a current results in this collector resistor. So always there is a current flows in this collector resistor. As the current flows power is going to be dissipated across this resistor. That means a large heat is going to be dissipated. Okay. Uh, first disadvantage is since there is a current flow in the resistor always the circuit has to dissipate a lot of heat. So power dissipation is maximum. First disadvantage. Second disadvantage. The circuit is complex. Complex circuitry. That means it requires so many components along with these additional biasing voltages minus VBB2 minus VBB1. Those are the two DC biasing voltages. So we must require two more power supplies for this one or at least one dual power supply. Okay. So it's going to be a complex circuitry which requires more number of components along with even one extra dual power supply. And third disadvantage is generally we know that one control voltage is going to be of rectangular nature so we may expect like this this is going to be a control signal this shows this is zero rise time we expect that one there is a zero rise time as well as zero fall time whenever control signal is changing from one level to other level at that time we insist that there will be zero rise and zero fall times okay but practically what happens there will be some amount of time it takes so this is going to be the situation and even if it is falling also it takes some amount of time so these are going to be treated as finite fall time and finite rise time due to finite fall time and finite rise times okay both the transistors may not be changing at the same time that is if one case q1 has to be whenever it is in the rising condition 0 to 1 that is upper level we expect that one q1 has to change from off to on as well as q2 has to change from on to off so this is exactly opposite that will be taking place across fall time so since because of this finite rise and fall times both the transistors may not be changing simultaneously at the same time so during some portion of time both the transistors may be in the off condition so q1 and q2 both may be in the off condition for a finite amount of time even though it is very very small if both are going to be in the off condition there will be no current flows in both transistors and V0 is going to be equal to VCC. That is a large spike is going to be taking place. A large spike appears okay, for the finite rise and fall times of because of finite rise and fall times of control voltage there will be a spikes appears in the output waveform. But we expect the zero pedestal but you may get some spikes like this. Look at this one. So this is 
zero rise and fall times of gating signals you have taken it as this is gate on q1 that means vc of q1 and this is gate of q2 gate on q2 that is vc of q2 so both are having finite rise time as well as finite fall time and during some extent of this one both the transistors during this period okay over here and over here q1 and q2 during this portion during this portion q1 and q2 both are in the off condition so that output will be reaching towards vcc so these are going to be called as spikes so if the gating waveform have definite rise and fall times two sharp spikes may be generated at the outputs okay these are the three disadvantages